How's it going, Fleetwood? Today is Friday, November 17th, 2023, and it's a day five. It's time to go skiing and snowboarding. Don't let the we cold weather stop you from enjoying this winter sport. Join us for Ski and Snowboarding Club at Bear Creek for six Thursdays in January and February to start shredding. Stop by the main office to get your sign-up papers. All paperwork is due December 1st. We're going back in time to continue our series, taking a look back at homecoming this week with a look on the voice competitions. Here with more is James Tiemann. The voice competition happened on our homecoming half day. The voice had at least two performances from each grade level, and the faculty had a performance. The judges were Dr. Miller, Mr. Herman, Ms. Nyman, and Ms. Carino. They would turn their chairs around to reveal who was singing, and at the end of the students performing, they would give comments about their performance. The first performance was performed by Mr. Barnett and Ms. Williamson, and they sang Closer to Find by the Indigo Girls. Their performance included them playing on guitar while singing. Next, the freshmen had performed three times, but their most popular one out of the three was Ella Ben Durick singing You're On Your Own Kid by Taylor Swift. After the freshman performances, the sophomores had two performances, where Josh Mitten sang The Longest Time by Billy Joel, and Yasael Lara sang Obsession by Aventura. Next, the juniors had a performance by Caleb Valentine where he played piano while singing From Now On from The Greatest Showman. Uh, today, I think I performed pretty well. It wasn't my best run I've ever done, but I think the audience liked it and the judges obviously liked it because they turned around quickly. And a performance by Aurora Kishbaugh singing Love Fool by The Cardigans. Last, the seniors performed twice with the performances being sung by Katie Milashovsky and Riley Spanish. Uh, I think it's a really fun experience, and I think underclassmen should really put themselves out there who think they have a good singing voice. So. And then after them, Izzy Finari and Dominic Barelko Bryn performed. In their first performance, Katie and Riley performed Exile by Taylor Swift, where Riley was playing piano and singing while Katie was singing. Um, I think we performed really well. We were both very nervous about some of the harmonies, some of the lyrics, but I think overall it went really well. The last performance of the competition was by Izzy and Dominic, where they sang Proud Mary by Ike and Tina Turner. After all the performances, the judges voted that the senior class won the competition. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm James Steeman. Thanks, James. And similarly, next Wednesday, we'll be live streaming Seniors Got Talent during the goals portion of our half day. Tune in to check out more talented students here at the high school. Taylor Swift is always a hot topic with some of you here at Fleetwood, so our TV media team took it upon ourselves to see just how big this pop queen really is. The Eras Tour. Some of you would turn your heads to this title, and maybe you sitting there darted your little eyes to the screen to see exactly what I'm going to talk about. Whatever the case be, this live concert is taking the world by storm, and there wouldn't be any better time to talk about it than here and now. Taylor Swift is an icon, a queen of the pop industry, and is the single most celebrated celebrity of today's world. I believe this popularization has to do with her large diverse fan base, and the insane ludicrous idolization that they do to her likeness. But I'm not just here to sit in awe of her success, I'm here to explain what contributed to her uprising. The Eras Tour was designed as a tribute to Taylor Swift's discography across her 17-year career. After the release of her 10th studio album, Midnights, Taylor went on tour to celebrate her freedom in the music industry and her very long career. The tour consisted of multiple songs across her 10 studio albums that she and her fan base dubbed her Eras, aka where this tour got its name. Taylor kicked off the tour in Glendale, Arizona on March 17, 2023 and made stops across the entire country from east to west coast. The tour is still going on today, and just recently went international with shows in Japan, Australia, Mexico, and many, many more. Taylor Swift's Eras Tour was dubbed an unprecedented financial phenomenon by Forbes, saying to have raked in a whopping $780 million already through ticket sales, and this tour is still going. This has apparently sent the pop queen up into the stratosphere with the billionaires. Yes, as of today, Taylor Swift is valued at $1.1 billion, from her music and performances alone. However, this is completely separate from her record-breaking box office sales for her Eras Tour movie. Taylor Swift made a documentary-style movie based off of her extremely successful world tour that shattered box office records at $128 million, the most amount of dough for a concert movie right above Justin Bieber's Never Say Never at $73 million. 
The Air Restore is a huge phenomenon for Taylor Swift and her career, as well as all of her fans, and it is only growing day by day. People today need to realize that this pop singer is the future of the industry, and an icon and influence to women and singers around the world. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Theodore Cayley. I'm sure now everyone can see why Taylor Swift is such an influential figure of our generation. FBLA signups have been extended to the 22nd of November. With that being said, any student still interested in competing in an event with FBLA needs to sign up by November 22nd or prior to Thanksgiving break in order to be eligible for competition. If you have any questions, visit Ms. Zackerman in Room 1. On October 24th, the library played host to our first Miller Keystone blood drive. We sent Ryan in to get us more on this event. On Tuesday, October 24th, in the heart of Fleetwood High School, we had our annual blood drive. The Miller Keystone Blood Center blood drive is where students and teachers come together to help make a difference. This event not only saves lives, but also teaches our students the value of giving back to the community. We had some questions regarding the blood drive, and here's Jackson Kessler to answer them. Yeah. What more have you to donate blood in the past? Uh, just knowing that it'll uh, help people all over. Uh, uh, what, what, you, what you donate here, uh, I believe, helps uh, three people. So that's usually what motivates people. The Miller Keystone Blood Drive at Fleetwood High School is where heroes can be made and lives can be saved. Join us and be a part of this incredible mission. I am Ryan Lopez, reporting for Tiger TV News. Thank you, Ryan. And if you're still interested in donating blood, don't you worry because that's not your only chance. The next blood drive is scheduled for January 25th. Pay attention to the upcoming announcements to, for sign-up information. The Women's Empowerment Club is selling t-shirts again this year. Please consider purchasing one in support of their awesome club. If you have any questions, please contact Ms. Rankin in room 9. Also, posters with the Roar Store QR code are available all over the school. We've got a new friendly face in the district, and it's our new food service director. Jackson stopped by to get to know the man behind the meals. At the end of last school year, Fleetwood hired new food service director Nathan Schefter. Schefter is a 2013 Bloomsburg graduate who has a vast experience in food service, hoping to change the district's lunch system for the better. I graduated from Bloomsburg University 2013, go Huskies. I firmly have done many things in the food industry. I've grown up uh, working in family restaurants, uh, family catering. Schefter is changing multiple aspects of how the food looks, made, and other things. He is also bringing back the infamous Subway Day. We're going to be looking into how it's made and the ingredients and recipes, and I want to taste good and I want to look good, so... Schefter and the lunch staff encourage you to give everything a try. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Jackson Kessler. Much appreciated, Jackson. I'm sure all of us are super excited to see what will go on in the kitchen. The show must go on. Last week's successful one act performances are behind us, but the theater club is still busy. They've shifted gears to begin prep work for the, this year's spring musical. Since auditions are right around the corner, we took a closer look at what to expect. The drama club has eagerly begun practicing for this year's spring musical, Fiddler on the Roof. From the 14th to the 16th of November, drama students met in Miss Williamson's room after school to practice the songs they will need to sing during auditions. Fiddler on the Roof is about a family that is all about tradition and the challenges that come when traditions are challenged by times that change. Um, so I really feel that this is a little bit more than just time changing traditions, but it's also a string of the fact that we have a Jewish family that is in a situation where they are forced out of their homes, but that comes um, as a secondary sto uh, story. So this is really about uh, Tevia, Milkman, and the challenges of having five daughters and the challenges of traditions being changed over time. The theater department is looking for more talented individuals to help fill the roles for this year's musical. So no matter your experience, or even if you're a little nervous, stop by the chorus room or see Miss Hilbert in R2 to introduce yourself to the wide world of theater. They are always looking for more people to join in to make the musical the best it could possibly be. Theater is about family. 
Um, we have so much fun. I love theater. It's one of the things that gets me up every morning. Uh, theater people are, frankly, some of the best people in the building. We love everybody. We get along. We're a family. We support each other. It doesn't matter what you look like, uh, you know, talent level. It's, it, you get something for, for everybody involved. I think everyone should do theater at least once in their lives because it's so positive. And people come out empowered, more confident, they know more things, and they just have a family that they can trust and lean on. Auditions for this year's musical are after Thanksgiving break on November 29th and 30th. So if you're interested, feel free to join the Drama Club's Google Classroom and stop by in the Chorus or Art Room this week to see how you can get started. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Theodore Cayley. Everyone, break a leg out there. Fiddler on the Roof auditions will be held November 29th and 30th in the high school auditorium. And audition materials are available now. Join the Theater Club Google Classroom for audition information. Audition scripts can be found in front of the Art 2 room. This show requires a large cast, and we need students of all shades, cultures, and backgrounds. It's been a quiet, work, it's been a quiet week in sports, but let's check in with Brody to see what's going on in the world of athletics. Thanks, Teddy. This week in sports, there are a few things to go over. Last week in the NFL, the Broncos had a surprising win against the Bills on Monday, on Monday night with a score of 24 to 22. The upcoming Monday night game features a Super Bowl rematch between the Eagles and the Chiefs. In the NBA, the in-season tournament has started on Tuesday. The Pacers with a surprising win against the 76ers. All courts in the NBA have been converted to the in-season in tournament designs. In the small world of sports, the Fleetwood Boys soccer team lost in the state quarterfinals to Blue Mountain, eliminating them from the tournament. The Tigers played a tight 0-0 game to the end before losing on penalty kicks. Fall sports are putting a bow uh, on their seasons while winter sports are just getting started. Nate checked in with the basketball team for a season preview. The Fleetwood Boys basketball team is preparing for another great season. The Tigers went 22-5 last year, winning their division and making it to the Giant Center for the district championship. Coach Terry Saylor returns for his last year with the program in hopes of going out on a positive note. Aiden Sumas, a senior who was captain last year, is hopeful this year's team can make a run again and looks forward to playing in front of large home crowds. Uh, we're going to hope to build on last year. You know, a district, champion, uh, district championship run is going to really be really hard to follow up, but uh, with all the talent we have coming back, I think we could uh, you know, make it a good season again. The Tigers will look to replace two starters from last year's team, one being Jake Carnish, who was a two-year all-county player for the Tigers and is the school's all-time points record holder. Coach Sittler is expecting a lot from a heavy senior class to lead the team this year. The Tigers will kick off the season on December 5th when they travel to Connor Weiser. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I am Nate Herb. Thanks, Nate. That wraps up the sports for this week. Back to you, Teddy. Thanks, Brody. Now it's time for our weekly segments. Here's Mr. Dreisbach with our beloved Random Ramblings. Cup of Destiny in front of us. Random topic. What is your go-to karaoke song? I mean... If you've been at Fleetwood for more than one year, I think you already should know the answer to this. My go-to karaoke song is Ice Ice Baby Vanilla Ice. I mean, come on. You gotta stop and collaborate and listen. And if you've been to a prom or a dance, you've probably heard me rap this out multiple times. It's, it's a crowd pleaser. And if anybody who's my age says to you that they don't know at least some of the words to the song, they're lying to you, all right? I've performed this at like four different weddings already because my friends have requested it. It's like, it's an awesome jam. Done. Thank you for that, Mr. Dreisbach. We can't wait to see what topic you pick next week. This week, we've also got another fan favorite. Here's Danny with another edition of the Weekly Catch. Today on the Weekly Catch, we caught the koi fish. Koi fish are freshwater fish that originated from Eastern Asia, and people from Japan believe that koi fish symbolize wealth, prosperity, love, successful career, and good fortune. There are over 20 types of koi fish that range in color, patterns, and types of scales. It is to believe that if given a koi fish as a gift, it's good luck. 
Most koi fish outlive their owners, having a lifespan of 200 plus years, and koi fish get sunburnt and need shade and deep water to avoid getting sunburnt. Koi fish are extremely intellectual and have long-term memories and can even recognize who feeds them and have the same sense that humans do. Thank you for tuning in with the Weekly Catch. Reporting for Tiger TV News, I'm Daniel Rosco. Thanks, Danny. You've got me hooked, and I can't wait to see what we reel in next time. Well, this is it. It's time for our weekly weather report. Coming to you live is a weatherman Dan himself. What's the weather look like today, Danny? Thank you, Teddy, for that nice introduction, and today's weather is looking rather cloudy. So don't get your hopes up because it's going to be nothing shining through today. But looking through the weekend, it's looking mostly partially cloudy on Saturday and mostly sunny on Sunday. But let's look at the weather report and look at the map, and it's looking like there's going to be no rain at all. So don't get your hopes up to get wet. Thank you so much, Danny, for letting us know what's going on in the wonderful world of meteorology. Well, it looks like that's it for Tiger TV News this Friday, November 17th. Thanks for tuning in. We always appreciate all the eyes watching us. With that being said, we'll see you next week with more news stories. Bye-bye!